Hi, I'm Julie Labonte, Director of the Water System Improvement Program. I wanted to share the progress we're making on the program as well as giving you an overview of what's to come in 2011. So why was 2010 such an exciting year for the Water System Improvement Program? First, we reached a $1 billion in construction milestone. Second, the San Francisco Board of Supervisors approved the appropriation of all remaining WESIP funding. This represents an incredible vote of confidence in our ability to deliver the program. And third, WESIP received acknowledgement and recognition from our industry peers as well as the trade media. Specifically, two independent review panels gave us high marks for our delivery efforts and WESIP received distinguished awards from local and national organizations, including the annual Infrastructure and Planning Award, the Construction Management Project Achievement Award, and the National Environmental Excellence Award. Overall, the WESIP team made great strides toward completing this critical upgrade of our water system and ensuring its reliability. Here are a few of the key milestones achieved in 2010. We completed the environmental review of four regional projects, bringing the number of project EIR certified to 11. It's important to note that not one single EIR has been legally challenged to date. This is unheard of for a water program of this size and scope in California. We also completed the design and advertised nine regional construction contracts, including those for major pipeline projects and the Harry Tracy water treatment plant. We issued construction notice to proceed on nine regional construction contracts, including those for two major tunnel projects and the Sonol Valley water treatment plant. And at the end of 2010, 19 projects were 2.1 billion were in construction. Again, these all represent significant progress. By the end of March, the WESIP will have 26 projects worth 2.4 billion in construction and we will have received bids for the Calaveras Dam project. And then, by the end of the year, pretty much all major WESIP projects will be in construction. To give you an idea of the breadth and scope of the work currently taking place in all six Bay Area counties, I'd like to share some project-specific highlights. In San Joaquin County, the Tesla treatment facility, which involves multiple treatment buildings in the state's largest UV water treatment plant, will reach substantial completion as planned in late April of this year. This will give us a full year to thoroughly test the facility before the federal and state mandate requiring advanced disinfection comes into effect. The San Joaquin Regional Team is excited to begin construction work on the last two contracts of the San Joaquin Pipeline System projects, which has a total value of $278 million. While work is ongoing on the crossover facilities, construction on the western segment of the new San Joaquin Pipeline is also getting underway, and the bid package for the eastern segment has been advertised. Now moving downstream to the Sonol Valley. We awarded contracts for two key projects, the Sonol Valley Water Treatment Plant and the new Irvington Tunnel. The total value for projects currently in construction in the region is $576 million. In November, a significant milestone was reached for the Alameda Siphon No. 4 projects when we completed the tunneling underneath Alameda Creek. Construction activities on this project are now 77% complete the new Irvington Tunnel mobilized in late summer and excavation work on the east portal and the intermediate shaft are progressing. The first of three road headers are on site and tunnel excavation will begin at Alameda West Portal by the end of February. Work on the Sonol Valley Water Treatment Plant Expansion and Treated Water Reservoir Project is proceeding as planned. The very extensive earthwork and soil nail wall required to build the new reservoir have been completed. Work is also proceeding as planned on the construction of a new flocculation and sedimentation basin at the plant. Construction activities are now about 23% complete on this project. As you all know, the largest project on the WESIP is the Calaveras Dam replacement. One of the WESIP's most significant milestones was reached last month when the project EIR was approved and the contract documents were advertised. 
If all goes as planned, we expect to start construction this August. Moving to the Bay Division region, the groundbreaking of the Bay Tunnel project was one of the major achievements of the year. Construction has gone very smoothly and the contractor will soon complete the excavation of the launching shaft on the west side of the bay. The tunnel boring machine is expected to arrive on site in May and the contractor plans to lower it into the shaft this summer. Turning to the two segments of the new Bay Division Pipeline No. 5 that will connect on each side of the Bay Tunnel. Construction of the 7-mile pipeline segment in the East Bay is now almost 80% complete. The East Bay project team has had to resolve a number of field challenges to keep the project on track. On the peninsula side, the construction of the 9-mile pipeline segment crossing East Palo Alto, Menlo Park and Redwood City is now about 40% complete. One of the more significant field challenges has been the discovery of three archaeological sites along the pipeline alignment. These discoveries have resulted in additional exploration and mitigation measures as well as the modification of construction methods in the impacted areas. The challenges I just described will impact the cost of the Bay Division Pipeline No. 5, but so far we've been able to maintain the project schedule. Another significant project in the Bay Division is the Bay Division Pipeline No. 3 and 4 crossover. And I am pleased to report that in 2010, the first of three crossovers was completed, as well as the work on all SCADA project sites. Finally, the project EIR for the seismic upgrade of Bay Division Pipelines No. 3 and 4 has been certified and the design package is now 95% complete. Perhaps more than any other region, the peninsula is where the most progress was made in the field. Six projects in the region are anticipated to achieve construction completion in 2011. The long-anticipated new Crystal Springs bypass tunnel is now in service. The connection of the new tunnel to the existing system was completed at lightning speed during a challenging shutdown in late January. We plan to be substantially complete with the overall project in the next two to three months. The contractor for the Crystal Springs San Andreas Transmission Upgrade Project mobilized in late 2010 and will begin construction shortly at multiple sites. We issued construction notice to proceed for the lower Crystal Springs Dam Improvements contract a few weeks ago after months of negotiations with multiple environmental permitting agencies. San Mateo County's demolition of the bridge on top of the dam has been completed just in time for the start of our activities at that site. We also anticipate the Crystal Springs Pipeline No. 2 replacement and the Harry Tracy Water Treatment Plant long-term improvement projects to mobilize in early spring. The two contracts awarded for these projects were 28% and 26% below our approved budget. This represents cost savings in the order of $74 million. Work on the Polgus Balancing Reservoir Rehabilitation Project is progressing. Field adjustments had to be made to account for the misalignment of some of the existing columns inside the reservoir. Construction activities are now 45% complete and substantial completion is anticipated in May of this year. Finally, in the San Francisco region, the University Mount Reservoir project will achieve substantial completion on schedule in March. The lessons learned on the Sunset Reservoir project help make this a very smooth project in the field. As you can see, we currently have an incredible amount of construction work. We've had to deal with a number of challenges in the field, but this is to be expected for a program of this size and complexity. I think what I'm most proud of is how our construction management staff project teams and contractors have worked so well together to efficiently and creatively tackle each one of these challenges. This progress represents the hard work of hundreds of individuals who have been working so hard on the retrofit of the Hetch Hetchy water system. 